Listener supported. WNYC Studios. Something has changed within me. Something is not the same. I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game. Too late for second guessing. Too late to go back to sleep. It's time to trust my instincts. Close my eyes and believe. It's time to try to find. Forest and for Leonard Lope, the most surprisingly popular new show on television is Glee, a dramedy about a group of Ohio teenagers who are members of their high school's show choir. Each episode features several musical numbers, and the actors on the show do all their own singing. Chris Colfer plays one of the more intriguing characters on the show, Kurt Hummel, an openly gay high school student in a conservative Midwestern town. His portrayal of Kurt has garnered many awards and fans. Chris Colfer, welcome to our show. It's such a pleasure to meet you. So good to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the character that you play. Well, uh, Kurt Hummel, he's um, he's the fashionable soprano of the uh, Glee Club. Um, he's he's very into fashion. He's very vogue, and uh, he thinks he's very superior to all those around him. <laughs> now, you originally auditioned for another role. Yes, I originally auditioned for the role of Artie. And um, at my audition, um, Ryan Murphy looked at me and he said, why do I have a feeling you've been in The Sound of Music? And I said, well, I was Kurt in The Sound of Music a, a long time ago. And um, I kind of hit it off with the writers and the producers um, at the audition, and they liked me, so they uh, created this new role of Kurt for me to do. What did you get to see ahead of time before the audition? Did you know much about it? About Kurt? About Absol- the Kurt or the show. Did they give you I, a- I knew the script, and, and I, was, I was very intrigued by it because it was the first thing I've ever read that it was about kids just like me. I was, I was a major theater nerd. So I was instantly like uh, drawn to it. Um, but um, as far as Kurt, I had no idea what Kurt was or what the character was until the f- basically the first day of shooting. When I got the script for the first time. Well, because they they created it for you, was right. there any apprehension at all that it wasn't in the original concept? It wasn't the original idea. They're sort of mm-hmm. shoehorning this character in. I think they did have to kind of um, you, you know uh, ease me into um, into the show uh, with the executives because the executives had already approved of you know the first the first uh, pilot script. And uh, there was no character um, of Kurt in it. So they, they did have to do a little convincing, but um, thank God they did, <laughs> for my sake. <laughs> I think, if I remember right, there was a cop show that was a musical. Cop Rock, yes. Cop Rock, the thank you. The Cop Rock. Right. I, I'm not sure if I can remember another musical show on television mm-hmm. which people just sort of break into song. Did, did you think... Well, this is a good idea, and it's right for me, but this doesn't have a chance. Well, I did have doubts, but um, I, I did know that there was an audience for it because I was that audience. Like, I grew up singing these songs, and I, I grew up, you know, being a, a total musical theater nerd. So I knew there was an audience out there for it. Um, so I, I, just, I think I just focused on that. And the controversy of having a gay, playing a gay character, how did you feel about that from the beginning? Um, at first, I was nervous and scared because I'm from a, uh, a small conservative town myself, um, and I um, Originally, I, I was, I didn't want to portray him like, like other people had portrayed gay characters on TV because usually the gay characters on TV they're very loud, they're obnoxious, they're sometimes annoying, and I didn't want that to Kurt because I, I didn't think many people could identify with with that you know obnoxious um, image. So I wanted to to make Kurt more, um, you know, more um, appealing, and I made him very you know subdued and internal and 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 like uppity and superior rather than loud, obnoxious, and, and annoying. <laughs> Are there aspects of Kurt's character that you identify with? Oh, yeah. I think, um, uh, well, for, for one, wanting to, to sing uh, girl songs because that's what you're good at. <laughs> I definitely know that very well. Um, and I, I know what it's like to, to you know, be, um, you know, to, to be like a... Uh, like a duck in a swan-filled pond, if you if you will. <laughs> in what ways? Like I, I was definitely like an outsider when I was in, in high school. Like I was probably the only person that that was serious about you know getting into theater arts um, after high school. Um, I was I was um, I, I was very different from from the rest. And, and were you were you greeted warmly by, for being an outsider in in your high school? Not not very warmly. No, no. I was I was definitely an outsider, and I was made sure that I that I knew I was an outsider. So is there an aspect of your character that you play that 
that speaks to other kids around the country, maybe even particularly in small towns that, that I you've certainly heard hope about. So. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I've gotten I've gotten thousands and thousands of uh, of messages from like Facebook and Twitter and 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 fan mail of just kids so happy that there is a character like her that they can relate to, um, and um and and that he's a positive character that his like his relationship with his father is celebrated. Um, he's he's so strong, and in every episode you just see how 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 strong and how smart and um and just what a, what a great guy he is. Let's talk about uh, your character's uh, relationship w- with with your father. Please, uh, you know it could have easily been the kind of guy that's like, "No son of mine," right? And, you know, right. and you know was just sort of an outcast. But mm-hmm. the guy who plays your father, the character, he's trying so hard yeah. to really understand that. Yeah, that must be so gratifying, I guess, uh, in, as a relationship. Do you know how that came about? Um, I know that it's it's kind of based on a personal story of of Ryan Murphy growing up when he came out to his dad. So I know there's there's like a, a personal story behind it. Um, but um, it's it's really like the first time on television a relationship like theirs has has been seen. It's the first time like a, a conservative father has accepted his his gay son like on, on television rather than kicking him out. Um, and I think originally I was kind of hoping Kurt would get kicked out because I you know as the actor I wanted like the gritty dramatic scene and <laughs> and, and all that. Um, but but just it, it means so much more that 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 there's there's love rather than than hate with with, with that. And, and is it tough doing those scenes? I mean, because I think it started off more as a comedy, but there's a lot of drama, and oh, you yeah. end up with with more than your fair share of that. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like the, the dramatic point of the show. Yeah. I kind of do everything dramatic. Um, I I enjoy it. I, it's like candy for me. Um, I I love you know the more emotion, the better for me. I I just love it. Um, but then but doing scenes with Mike O'Malley, Mike, Mike O'Malley is just he's he plays the father. Yeah, he's fantastic. So it he makes it very easy. Um. Uh, on Glee, many of the characters are outcasts in one way or another, not just your character. Uh, it, it, do you think that's par for the course for most of the kids who, who relate to these shows? I hope so. I, I hope there's um, there's you know one outcast that everyone can relate to. I think that's kind of the point of having so many different genres of, of the nerd in our show is that there's there's something for everybody. I'm Elliot Forrest. Filling in for Leonard Lopate, we're talking to Chris Colfer. He plays Kurt on the hit TV show Glee tomorrow night. Season finale? Yes. Yes, tomorrow night at 9 on and Fox. Anything you can tell us about what to expect? Well, you, there's a big battle coming up with uh, New Directions, our, our Glee Club, to the competitive Glee Club called um, A Vocal Adrenaline. So it's our final showdown with them. So, uh, so you have to tune in to see uh, who wins uh, regionals. Uh, of course, a huge part of the show are the songs. Yes. Um, your range uh, is incredibly high. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of go back and forth. Uh, uh, w- where did you learn to sing? Um, I never really learned how to sing. Um, I, I mean, I, I think I get most of my experience from just the shower, um, just, just, you know, and, and <laughs> Where we all annoying great. my parents to no end, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, singing loud, having grand encore concerts in the shower. Um, but, um, I, I mean, I kind of, I've kind of been stuck with this, this very, uh, this high pitched voice, um, you know, since for, forever. Um, so I kind of learned how to use it too, to my advantage. And I can go very low, too. Not people know that. I, I went low very one, like once on the show, and no one believed it was me. You, you want to give us one of your notes? Well, I mean, there, there was a, a, a song when I was doing, to the roof off, to the roof off, <laughs> or, and no one, no one believed it was me. Like, I got so many messages saying, that was computerized. I'm like, no, it was me. It was me. <laughs> we should tell people, because uh, we had Brad Ellis on this show uh, earlier this year, that all the kids do their own singing. Yes, yes. Every, every soloist does their own singing. Yes. And, uh, it's a rule. And and uh, the process, the way that happens, you rehearse it, and and then you produce the musical numbers by laying down the tracks and mm-hmm. then singing over them. Yeah. Usually, what we do is we um we'll go into the recording studio and record the song, and then we'll learn the dance to it, and then just put the two together um, when we're filming it. And do you have a favorite solo song? Um, I love doing Rose's turn. Um, uh, selfishly because it was just me and the crew one late night, and uh, I just I had a blast doing it. It was just it was fun just to be in front of an empty audience and and just get to to, to perform it. It was great. Oh. And a big song with your name on it. Yeah, yeah, with a big, big curtain lights behind me. Yeah, right. that's great. And a favorite ensemble song that you've done? Oh gosh, um, I loved. Um, Oh, gosh, I don't know. It's like trying to pick my favorite bone in my body. They're all kind of important to me. <laughs> <laughs> do you make suggestions? Do you hear songs that, what, that you think, oh, they sh- we should do this and, and go to the writers with it? Um, usually usually it just comes up in, in, um, in, in you know, when we're, when we're having a conversation. Like, like the whole Defying Gravity storyline was actually a, a, a storyline that happened to me. Well, not a storyline, but actually happened to me in, in high school when I uh, – 
requested that I sing Define Gravity in our, our drama talent show. And uh, the other students in the class who were probably just jealous that I could sing it because they're mostly girls and they couldn't sing it, but I could. Um, they, they turned me down, so I wasn't allowed to. Normally, um, this song is sung by, by yes, Adina Menzel. By, by Adina Menzel or some powerhouse of female right, from right. Broadway. Um, so that they took that from, from my life. And, uh, and uh, I kind of uh, sarcastically suggested that Kurt sing Rose's turn. Um, uh, to, to Ryan and uh, he wrote that at the show too. So they're very they're very open for um, suggestions. Uh, big musical theater fan, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you've worked with a lot of people. A lot of guest stars come in. Have they given you any advice? Um, not not too much advice, I'd say. Um, I, I'm usually usually just too busy like stalking them and and collecting their DNA as they walk. <laughs> um, to uh, ask advice. <laughs> like who? Tell me who you stalked. Who's been on the show? Well, I mean, well, I don't want to say stalked, but it's pretty much stalking. <laughs> um, I um I I'm madly in love with Kristen Chenoweth, and I always will be. Um, she is just she's just as, as sweet as she is talented, and I love working with her. Uh, I have to ask you about Adina Menzel because mm-hmm. from the moment Leah Michelle came on the show, uh, everyone said, wow, she looks yeah. so much like Adina Menzel. Was it always in the plot line in the story to the writers that they would get her on or was it sort of an audience idea that just blossomed in, well, she has to be your mother? I don't know. I, I, I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, I, I I would hope it was like an audience idea because I think I think our audience is the people that kind of created it before any, any of us did. And uh, being here in New York, as we're we're uh, live here, and only several blocks from Broadway, you seeing some shows while you're here. I I, I did. I saw uh, Next to Normal last night, um, which was fantastic. I loved it. It's about time electroshock therapy came to Broadway, in my opinion. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm I'm a huge theater uh, show buff, so I hope to see more while I'm here. And uh, I mean, this is your first job ever or professional job? Well, well professional Being job. Like, like I had like my summers and the dry cleaners and uh, I scooped cookies in the cafeteria every morning before school. Um, so I've had little, you know, little, you know, jobs, but this is my first gig. So, so what's that like for you? Because it's, it's, this is a huge leap. The last 12 months of your life have yeah. dramatically changed who yeah. you are and how people view you. It's, it's almost, it's, it's, I think surreal is the best word. Um, it really is. It's mind blowing. Um, it sure beats the dry cleaners. I'll say that. <laughs> My first job was at a gas station, and I like radio. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, with the theater background, although it's television now, do you think at some point you'll find some way to get to, to Broadway or audition I, for something? I hope so. Um, I'm, I'm coming. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but, I, but, I, but I, I'm coming there so eventually, someday, somehow. Yes. Uh, the other thing that I think is instantly recognizable uh, from the show is that uh, the diversity mm-hmm. uh, of the members of the cast. I'm, I'm just guessing that that was part of the the plan all along. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Having um, you know, kind of like a, a melting pot of, of characters, yeah. Um, and speaking of being recognized, uh, and people stop you on the street now. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Yeah. What do they say? Oh, usually it's um, I, I love Define Gravity. I love your character. I love you. You're, you know, just you know, it, it's great to be complimented every everywhere you go. <laughs> and uh, the response back home. What are they saying? Um, I I think um, I, I think they're happy. I think I think they're proud. Um, they're they're, they're um. I, I think sometimes they get a little upset with me because because I do talk about Clovis, California, where I'm from, as being conservative town, but um. But uh, I mean, I, I had I grew up there. I mean, it's it's always going to be home. So so I'm I'm there proud of me. I know they are. Yeah. And, and was it a was it, it seems like it probably was a solid background for performing arts though. It really was. Um, I don't think I I could have picked a better um uh, uh, upbringing. Um, and um, I was very very fortunate because I went to a a high school with an ex, an extraordinary uh, performing arts department. Um, like we got we got to do like two shows a year. Um, we had like a full orchestra with every musical. We had amazing sets. It, it was it was. It was great to to be part of um, so such a great um, performing arts academy. Recently, many of the cast members went on on tour, live tour. Uh, how, how big of a how big of the coliseums were you playing? Oh gosh, um, like like uh, usually like five thousand plus. Um, like Ready City Music Hall. Um, we did the Dodge Stadium Stadium Amphitheater. Um, we did um, oh gosh the Gibson uh, Amphitheater in L.A. Um, very very big um, big crowds. Yes. And I'm guessing you enjoyed that. Oh, thoroughly, yes. <laughs> uh, one of the blogosphere uh, uh, things that's flying around is that Kurt gets a real life out and proud boyfriend next year. Can you confirm or deny? Um, I think I can confirm because, as far as I know, it's happening. I I have no idea who it is or or what what it is or what he is. Um, I've just asked that he be less attractive than me because I really don't want to be the weak link in the couple. That would, that would just be horrible. How far ahead have you already taped? How many episodes into the second season? We haven't even started yet. Oh, so really? We start in uh, mid-July. 
So I, I, I don't know what's coming up. I want to remind everybody we're talking to Chris Colfer from the TV show Glee. He plays Kurt. Uh, the final episode is tomorrow. You, did, yes. you didn't uh, give a lot one. away. Uh, the, <laughs> um, a, any other guest stars make any? Well, uh, a, 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 a new cast member um, um, comes in, into the show. I will say that. They just kind of pop in and pop out. And I think the, uh, the fans will know what I'm talking about. You know what I love about the show mm -hmm. is um, somebody will go, oh, I just have an idea for a song and let me toss it off of you mm. and then all of a sudden it comes with lighting yeah. and smoke effects <laughs> right, right pyrotechnics yeah and we kind of buy that yeah i know right it, i mean you know it's it's all in good fun i think uh as long as we don't take ourselves too seriously with the show and and the audience doesn't either i think i think it's a great balance <laughs> it takes place in um is it Lima or Lima? Lima, I believe. Like, Li like Lima, like the bean. Lima, Ohio. Yes. Have you heard anything from the town there? Absolutely nothing. No. I, I wish. I wish we we had though. I wish we had. I mean, you need a sign as you walk into town, the home of Glee. Or right, right, right. Think right. they'd be happy about that. As seen on TV. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Jane Lynch. She is such a great <laughs> character. This is uh, and so well written, and she's yeah. so well performed. Mm. Can you keep a straight face in front of her? No, it's impossible. Um, I've been very fortunate. I've had several scenes with her, and in every scene, like it definitely just tests my ability more and more because she is just, she is just a force of nature. She is just hysterical. Like, like every just like a little flick of her nose, like just is hysterical. Like I don't know how she does it. She's just one of the funniest human beings on earth. Uh, one somewhat serious question, and that and that is this: There's always, not always, but every once in a while, they'll touch on the fact that the arts budgets are being cut, or they're mm -hmm. actually trying to close down the Glee Club. And as it relates to arts budget, I'm just wondering if a show like this might actually have some positive impact in the arts budgets around mm -hmm. the country. That people will see that it's important, that it's integral in their lives, it changes lives, and uh, that things will turn around and not be the first thing they cut in right. school budgets. I, I I certainly hope so. Like 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 I said, I I went to to an amazing performing arts academy, and when I was in when I was in high school, um, we had like every um advantage possible, and it it really definitely just helped me become you know a better performer. So I I I hope, I hope every school you know in, in the country you know gets that that uh, privilege. What else? What's next for you? Are you sticking with Glee? Anything else you want to well, tell us well, about? I'm pretty gleeful right now. I mean, <laughs> I I did, I did a voice for like the Marmaduke movie. Um, just you know, just little things like that. But um, but for right now, I'm very very gleeful and and very happy to be gleeful. I'm very fulfilled just doing Glee. So I'm I'm great just being there. <laughs> I've been speaking with Chris Colfer, who plays Kurt on the Fox hit show Glee. The season finale airs tomorrow night. At it's 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Thank you so much for being with us oh, here today. Oh, thank you so much. It's a great time. Best of luck to you in everything you do. Thank you. Thank you.